Well, good evening. I'm so glad you could join me this evening. We we have such a, a nice fire going and, and a jack-o'-lantern, which is appropriate to the season, you know. Oh, I see you brought me some kindling for the fire. But I'm going to take your kindling, thank you very much, and we're going to gently toss it on our fire. There we go. Aha, there. Now you see what I've done. I've made my fire your fire. And we're all together on this wonderful evening at this time of year that the Celts call Samhain. Now, you perhaps know it as All Hallows' Eve or Halloween. It is the time of year in Celtic mythology and in very sp many spiritual traditions when the, the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest and uh, spirits, perhaps ghosts from the other side, can travel over to our side. And we don't need to worry about them, you know, because we've got the fire, we've got the jack-o'-lantern, we're all safe here. I do need to be telling you about one spirit that sometimes is known to be haunting these parts this time of year, Samhain. And the jack-o'-lantern reminds me of him, uh, of himself, you know, his name is Irish Jack. Now, Irish Jack was the meanest fella that ever lived. <laughs> How mean was he, did you say? Well, I'm glad you asked that. He, he was so mean he would steal candy from a baby. He was so mean that he'd sneak into your house at night, find your bathroom, find your toothbrush, steal the toothbrush, then brush the doggy's teeth with it and put it back without even rinsing it out. If he was in a particular mean mood, he'd brush his own disgusting teeth with it and put it back. Oh, oh, heavens forbid. Now, Irish Jack was a trickster. He was always going around tricking people out of their money or their food or, or, or what have you. Now, this is a story about how Irish Jack tricked the greatest trickster of all time, and that would be the devil himself. Now, you know, the, the devil is the greatest trickster. The devil, one of, his, one of his pastimes is to go around and try and steal people's souls, you know, and take them down to, you know, the, the hot place, H-E, double hockey sticks now. And... Uh, uh, he, he, he loved to be doing this, and, uh, well, there was one day when he, he was having a, a long day of stealing souls, and he was tired at, at the end of the day and decided to take a little snooze, uh, uh, oh, I think, over in the apple orchard there, and uh, he's sleeping under a tree, and uh, who comes up behind him but, you guessed it, Irish Jack. Now, what does Jack do? He, he sees the devil there, and he sneaks up behind him and gives him a swift kick in the rump. Well, the devil is woken up from his nap, says, huh, who's after waking me up from my nap here? And Jack says, ah, tis I, Irish Jack. Well, the devil recognized him at once, because Irish Jack was one of the souls that the devil thought, well, he should be taken to live down in, you, you, you know, the, the hot place there, H-E double hockey sticks. And so the devil says to Jack, hey, Jack, now that you're done kicking me, maybe you'd like to come down with me to, you know, the hot place, H-E double hockey sticks. Oh, no, thank you very much, Mr. Devil, says Jack. I, I, I like it very well the way things are. I be having fun up here, making all kinds of mischief, you know. And the devil says, oh, come on, Jack. And then Jack, oh, he gets an idea. And he says to the devil, well, devil, 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 you're not looking so good. You, you look a little peaked. You, you, you lost some of your red, rosy glow. Well, the devil says, well, <laughs> I'm fit as a fiddle, fine as I ever was now, says the devil. Well, Jack says, devil, I will bet you that you're not even fit enough to climb this here apple tree and pick me a nice, shiny, red, rosy apple with the devil. The devil took Jack's bait, you know. And the devil shimmies up the tree, you know. 
And just as the devil's about to pick the nicest apple on the tree, what does Jack do? Jack reaches into his pocket, takes out a piece of chalk, runs over the tree, and makes the sign of the cross on the trunk of the tree. Now, cross is a mighty powerful symbol. And the devil, well, he's powerless in the face of the cross. The short of it was, the devil was stuck up the tree. <laughs> Jack had stuck him up there then. Oh, so the devil starts saying, oh, Jack, what you sticking me up here for? You got to erase that cross and let me down. You know, I got to get back to, to me home there. Uh, uh, the hot place, you know, H-E double hockey sticks in Jack says, Oh, no, devil, I like you up in that tree very well. Thank you very much. The devil starts bargaining with Jack, offering him things. Ah, oh, but Jack, I'll give you anything you want. Uh, you money, food, uh, pretty women. Ah, oh, Jack, Jack says, I don't need any of that stuff, devil. I'm, I, I, I'm doing quite well. Thank you very much. Well, the devil says, well, I, 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 Would you like me, uh, uh, it's it's uh, uh, that uh, baseball team, uh, the the Los Angeles Dodgers. I'm moving back to Brooklyn for you, you know, whatever. Uh, and ja uh, Jack says, "Well, I, I don't really care for those New York teams, the Yankees, the Dodgers. You, you, you can have them all." Well, then, the, besides, I, I I'm more of a, a football fan, me American football fan myself. I've been spending a lot of time in Louisiana lately, you know. And the devil says, "Well, ah, that that." that how about this? I, I, I give you, give you, give you season tickets to the to the LSU Tigers football games, and every time you attend one of their games, the Tigers will win. And Jack says, "Oh no, 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 devil! Uh, thank you very much, but I, I, I like it better when they lose. Makes makes more people." Uh, in Louisiana, unhappy, you know. And uh, so, so the devil, the devil's running out of things, and then Jack comes up with another idea. Okay, devil. He says, I'll erase the cross. I'll let you down if you make a bargain with me and you promise never ever to take me soul down to, you know, the hot place there. H-E double hockey sticks. Never. Well, the devil thinks about this and he says, Ah, oh, you, you drive a hard bargain, Jack, but I need to get out of this tree. So I promise never to take your soul down to H-E double hockey sticks there, the hot place. And so Jack... He erases the, the cross from the tree, and the devil shimmies on down and runs away with his little pointy tail there between his legs, you know. And Jack, well, he goes on doing more ornery, mean things to people through the years, you know, stealing candy from babies, like I said before, tricking people out of this and that. Well, one day, he comes across the hut of the old widow McGillicutty. The old widow, widow McGillicutty and her 13 children. Now, the widow and her children, they were so poor. <laughs> How poor were they? Is that what she said there? Well, I'm glad you asked. The widow and her 13 children were so poor that all they could afford for their supper was one greasy gray-green turnip. But... They were good people, you know. And they're about to eat their turnip. It's sitting on the table. They're all gathered around the table. They all bow their heads in thanksgiving to God for the turnip. And what does Jack do? Well, he shimmies into the window, he does. And he steals the turnip from the table. And he runs out the house. And he runs down the walkway and he starts mocking the family, saying, I stole a turnip. <laughs> I stole a turnip. He takes a bite. I stole a turnip. I stole a turnip. I stole a turnip. And he chokes. Then he dies. Well, what happens next? Well, Jack's soul goes out of his body and goes up. Up the escalator, you know, up to the pearly gates of heaven. I say, Peter, he's not there. He's on vacation, you know. But he's left a band of angels guarding the pearly gates. Well, Jack gets up there to the angels on the other side of the gate, says to the angels, 
Well, hi. Hello there, I'm Jack. I'm after dying. I'm here for me eternal reward. <laughs> well, the angels say, what? Well, Jack? Jack who? Oh, no, no, just Jack. Just Jack, says Jack. And, uh, oh, the angels start consulting their, their list, you know, of who's allowed in inside the party gates of heaven there. And they say, well, are you, are you Jack be nimble? Oh, no, 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 just Jack. Uh, Jack Spratt. <laughs> no, 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 just, just, just Jack. Uh, 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 Jack Black. Oh, no, but I, I can play a mean tune, you know. Uh, uh, are you Jack Daniels, perhaps? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, but he's a friend of mine, says uh, just, just Jack. Then, one of the angels, I believe it was, the littlest of them all, the angels, now she had heard tales of, of Irish Jack, and she recognized him at once, and she says, I know you, you're Irish Jack. Oh, no, you'd not be allowed here. And all the angels said, Irish Jack? Oh, no, 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 no. And they all started singing. Hit the road, Jack. Don't go around no more, no more, no. Well, Jack got the message, you know, so uh, off he goes down, down, down the escalator, down below the earth, down, down to the gates. The hot place, you know, H E double hockey sticks. And he looks inside the gates and he, he sees the devil in there and a bunch of moaning souls shoveling hot coals on the floor of the hot place, you know. And he says, uh, he knocks on the gates. Uh, Hello there, Jack here. <laughs> I'm after dying. I'm here for me eternal reward. <laughs> <laughs> well, the devil, he recognizes Jack right away. Straight away says to Jack, Oh, no, I remember the likes of you. You're Irish, Jack. And now we made a bargain some years back that I was never, ever to allow your soul here into the hot place. You know, H-E double hockey sticks now. So go on, go, go on with you. But Jack says, but I... I, I'm dead now. I, I, they won't take me upstairs. I've got to go somewhere, haven't I? You, you got to let me in here. Oh, no, says the devil. We made a bargain. Oh, but devil, please, you got to let me in here. I, oh, my friends are in here. Oh, hello there, Senator. <laughs> oh, you got to let me in. The devil gets sick and tired of Jack's whining and complaining, reaches down to the floor of the hot place and scoops up two hot coals and tosses them at Jack. Now Jack, still holding the turnip, clutching the turnip that he held when he died, you know. He holds it up to shield his face from the hot coals and the hot coals burn into the turnip. And the turnip glows with an unearthly glow. And where the two coals went into the turnip, it looks like two evil eyes. And where Jack took bites out of the turnip, it looks like an evil, leering grin. And the devil says to Jack, You are doomed to forever roam the earth carrying your own lantern. Jack's own Lantern, Jack, oh, the lantern. Oh, yes, you figured it out, didn't you? That was the first jack of lantern. There be one right by my side here. Only we don't be using turnips anymore to make jack o' lanterns, do we? We, of course, we use pumpkins. Now, if you've ever tasted a turnip pie, you know why we do what we do there. So thank you so much for sharing the story of Irish Jack on behalf of the Baton Rouge Irish Club here for you. I wish you a safe and happy Samhain and a good night.